I just got back from the camera shop and picked up this little bad boy. This is the new OMD EM5 from Olympus. It's basically bringing back their old OM film camera series. Um, I think if anyone knows anything about this camera, one of the hardest decisions I had was not to purchase it, but whether to go with the silver body or the black body. Um, so I'll, I won't spoil the surprise yet, but uh, I'll let you see what I picked up. I haven't opened it yet. Uh, I'm very, very excited uh, to extend my uh, four thirds uh, camera set. I really feel like one of my major driving factors in getting this camera was the high ISO performance. Uh, something that I, I feel that was lacking on some of my previous cameras. And actually, with this camera, it's got the built-in electronic viewfinder, similar to what this uh, uh, G2 has. Um, but I find this camera, it's just, it, it does the job, but it doesn't handle the ISO as much as I'd like. And I think that the OMD is really going to push that forward and push the image quality forward. Uh, most of the reviews I've seen have said that this camera is close to, if not on par, with my D7000, which is quite exciting. Uh, also, this camera has weather sealing, um, which my D7000 also has. So, I'm a little curious to see in the next year what happens with, with my Nikon, if I continue shooting with that, or if I uh, try to replace it and maybe just invent, uh, invest more into my lenses. Um, I do really believe in, in investing in your glass and I was looking to um, extend my camera this time just because I felt like the technology had moved forward. But I did bite the bullet a bit and invested in one of the famous uh, lenses for the Micro Four Thirds system, the 20mm Lumix. Uh, so I'll be unboxing that today as well. Um, you know, don't want to break those, that mentality of investing in glass. You know, bodies go out of style really quickly and unfortunately I fell into that loop of you know having three micro four thirds bodies uh, but I do have some glass to go with it now so let's open this up see what we have you can see first there's our instruction guide and oh this is the worldwide warranty card some disc with some software on it, which I've never ever used any of these discs that have ever come with cameras, so I'll just throw that out. We open this up. <clears throat> you can see we've got the cable over here. That's got to be for the charger. Some of your hookups for video. There's your USB cable. These two I've never used. Um, for any of my cameras, so I'm not sure what this is. It looks like a little soft case. Oh, maybe for the flash. A little felt case. There's the tiny little flash. I'm interested to see how well this works. Um, it's got some sort of rubber grommet on it here. Well, I'll have to play with that, see how that comes off. To actually attach it to the camera. Well, step one, it's really hard to get this plastic thing off. <laughs> there is the battery charger. New battery. There's the charger. I'm not sure if this is the same battery as in my pen. Let me just pull out the pen one right now. Take a peek. I don't think so. No, it's just slightly different in size. Definitely a different model. This is the one from my pen and this is the OMD. It's a little disappointing that it wasn't the same battery or I could have reused that. And let's get to the real goods. As you can see, I did opt for the silver version of the camera. 
it's really got some weight to it. Let me just move this box out of the side. It, one of the things that really I, I enjoyed about the camera was just the magnesium alloy body and it really feels sturdy in your hands where some of these ones, you know, here's, here's it in comparison to the pen. You can see it's actually not, uh, not much bigger than the pen other than the hump up top. It's pretty much the same size altogether. And here I'll compare it to the, the G2. It's really very comparable to the G2. Now I haven't got the battery grip yet, but um, <clears throat> I, I am looking to, to pick up the battery grip in the near future. It's actually a big trade show this weekend in Ottawa um, that I'm going to take a look at. One of the things, really nice things, I played with the model in the store is the two dials that are adjustable um, to change different settings be a lot quicker than going through your menu system for changing things like your exposure comp or even set them up to change your ISO or yeah so it's a very nice camera. Uh, one disadvantage compared to the Lumix is that you have this tilty screen but it only tilts in one direction which on the Lumix actually you get the full so the only, the only time I find that that's really going to interfere is when I actually turn the screen this way um, to take a, a shot, a self-portrait. But I figured that's something I could definitely live with. Um, one other thing that I don't really like about this camera is that the on-off switch is down here which I really like where it's positioned on some of my other cameras up by your finger where it's easy to turn on and off. I find with, when I'm dealing with the Micro Four Thirds I like to turn it off more often than not just to save on, on battery life. Um, so why don't we take a look at what this camera looks like with some lenses on it. Give you an idea of scale and let, let's go for the big one first, my, my 100 to 300. So I find, I found this in the store too, it can be a little, a little tougher to get on these guys because of the weather ceiling. Um, yeah, you can see, it looks pretty good. It actually, <laughs> for this guy, it actually feels a little more in scale than on the pen. The pen kind of looks ridiculous with this lens on it. Um, you get a lot of looks actually, but I think that looks pretty sharp. All right. Next, one of my favorite lenses, the Voigtlander. So this is really what I was looking for. You know, if that doesn't look like an old film camera, I don't know, that just looks gorgeous. I'm sure I'm going to get lots of looks when I'm out shooting with this configuration. Lots of people always always look at these lenses and try to figure out what the heck you're shooting with. Um, and this is just going to be a hoot. Alright, let's get our next one here. The 12 mil. Oh yeah, look at that. It's gonna be a just damn sexy camera. Very much looking forward to, to shooting with this. All right, let's get some of this out of here. Time for our next unboxing, which I'll just put the OMD off to the side. My new lens, yay. Now I have heard there's a bit of an issue with the OMD with some banding, with this lens in particular that uh, Olympus is working on right now. But uh, this is one of those, you know, I'd almost say legendary lenses in the system that uh, has got almost a cult following with it right now. Um, and really what I was looking forward to is having a, um, 
a lens, a pancake lens in my system. Because I've bought this small system, but you look like some of my lenses are just, just enormous. Um, you know, I was looking for a good stream, streamline uh, lens to work with. So let's open this one up. Some instructions, how to use your lens. I don't think I'll be looking at those. Our bubble wrap. I definitely don't want these guys breaking. There we go. The 20 mil. And it comes with a little soft case, which I'm sure you can use. Some people do. I do not. But nice to have anyways. It's actually quite padded. It doesn't feel as cheap as some of the other ones I've had in the past. Um, but let's just look at some of the size comparisons. Well, let's start with one of the big, so biggest lenses in my system. You can see the difference between a 20 millimeter and the 100 to 300. It's got the same look as the 100 to 300. That was one of the things that actually discouraged me about this lens is um, I like good looking lenses and I think uh, Panasonic really has to step the bar up and start building lenses more like Olympus um, that have just a classic styling. These ones, even their new X series, I'm not a big fan of, um, you know, image quality and, and the lenses themselves and performance, yeah, are great, but I wish the aesthetics of them and the, the build looks were much, much better. So, this is in comparison to the Voigtlander. You can see <laughs> kind of why I wanted to get into a pancake lens because some of these lenses are quite, quite large. And of course, the 12 mil. All right, let's mount this on the OMD and see what it looks like. There we go. Take that off. The OMD with the 20 mil. Well, that's it, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for watching my video. I hope to have more. Uh, there's my lenses. I hope you enjoy videos like this. And uh, you'll probably see a lot more micro fur thirds out of me in the future.